Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to The Social Regressive. I'm Kyle Broderick and I'll be your tour guide through this unboxing video. I don't like to do these on my channel for the most part because I think they're tedious and pointless. What's in the box is much less important than how it works, so if I'm going to test a rifle, I'm going to get outside and I'm going to shoot it in practical scenarios that kind of match what the rifle is set up for. And this rifle is a little bit different. What's in this box or not in this box is going to be very important to me and probably very important to you. The patrons of the Destructive Arts out on Patreon, they selected this rifle in a poll. We put a poll out there and on Facebook and people could determine what from the Savage catalog they wanted me to review next. I had a handful of items that I wanted to check out and they picked this. This is the Savage 110 Scout. So the new 110 line includes both short action and long action rifles. And it's just kind of a whole revamp of a lot of the standard rifles that we've come to love from Savage over the years. They've kind of combined them all into this one uh, kind of designation. And then they just put a word after it like varmint, uh, you know, brush hunter, predator, and in this case, scout. They picked the 110 scout to test out. And this, I think, is going to be a really interesting one because it deviates a lot from a, a lot of the, the videos that I have been doing here in the recent past. I've been doing a lot of precision shooting, a lot of long range prone shooting, and this is built not to be shot from the prone, it's built to be shot offhand. That's what this really is designed for. The Scout model rifle as kind of put together as uh, conceived by Jeff Cooper is supposed to be a short, lightweight rifle that's chambered in a pretty hard-hitting caliber like 308. Uh, in the case of the, the Savage 110 Scout, uh, you get the choice of 223, 308, um, 338 Federal, and 450 Bushmaster. So you get one that's more of a, you know, kind of plinking and a little bit faster, but then you kind of get into what Jeff Cooper was more about, which is the, uh, the heavier hitting sort of thing. These rifles are intended to be shot at kind of closer ranges, say about zero yards out to about 400, 450. That's how he figured it. And they were designed to be handy, easy to stow, uh, easy to carry, sling over your shoulder, put in a truck. They're meant to be quick to hand, quick to point, and just kind of easy to use all around. But what Savage has done is they've taken that formula and they have <clears throat> kind of done their own version of it. There are a couple of companies that have put out scout rifles, and Savage has had a scout rifle in the past. I think it might have been a 111 or something. But now this is in their new form factor, in their new stock. And what this stock is, it's called the AccuFit stock. So what we have is, well, it's kind of a combination of the two. The old Accu stock had an aluminum bedding block running through here and up into the forearm to make sure that even though it was a plastic lightweight stock, that it was very stiff, that it wouldn't flex when it was placed on a bipod or run off a sling, that you could count on this and no matter what style of shooting you were going to employ it. But what they've done now is they've added the AccuFit system. So with this, you can remove this spacer right back here and you can swap it out or stack the, or stack these things and you can get different lengths of pull to fit your individual dimensions. And they also have different cheek risers right here that you can also remove and swap out while you're doing that. So you can make this fit you and how your cheek works and how you look through the scope to make it fit perfectly and do it in an inexpensive way. Instead of making this a really expensive rifle with all kinds of movable parts, they just made some plastic parts you can swap out and pop in. Really great idea. And that's the part that I'm really curious about in this box. I want to see uh, what they've actually included. Did they include some of the cheek risers? Did they include some of the butt pad spacers? We're about to find out. But first, I want to take a good look at the rifle. And before we actually do that, I do want to point out a couple of things about just the overall shape of this. You'll see that we have a forward mounted optics rail. This is part of Jeff Cooper's design. He wanted to use not a regular rifle scope where that you know it's typically sitting way back here and it's pretty close to your eye. He wanted to have a big field of view to be able to see everything out around him, to see, be able to see the environment, and then have a relatively small view through the scope using 
basically a pistol scope up front. And then I mentioned iron sights, I think. We have a peep sight at the back, and then kind of a bladed, protected front sight right up here. So this does pretty well fit uh, his concept for that rifle. Before we take a close look at this, I just wanted to point out the shirt that I'm wearing. Thank you, The Hide, for sending this to me. Uh, go check out his channel, guys. Just look it up on YouTube. Go uh, look up The Hide channel, and you'll find him. He has a really neat, here's the back of it. He has a really neat setup. He reviews rifles mostly. He's done some other firearms. But uh, he has a cool setup in his backyard where he can, you know, test the precision of a rifle at 100 yards if he needs to. But he can also do some run and gun things. He has uh, just a neat little course set up in his backyard that I totally want to crash sometime. It looks like a lot of fun. All right, let's delve into the rifle. Where should we start? The muzzle end or the butt end? Now let's take a look at the buttstock. Since this is kind of the crux of the whole thing, this is where you get the, uh, the fun parts to swap out. The recoil pad back here is very thick and it has some nice squish to it. It's not as squishy as some of their older models, and it's nicely rounded at the edge here. So this should not hang up on clothing quite as much. This should be pretty easy to get into the shoulder to take a fast shot. And yeah, it's gonna absorb recoil from that 450 Bushmaster, the 338 Federal, or the 308 that we have here. Installed is one of the spacers already in place. Up top, this is one of the uh, comb height pieces and we'll see what other pieces are available. I'm guessing that this is the shortest one. Moving forward, and take a look at some of the, the shapes that we have going through here. You get a lot of nice straight lines th that are radiused with you know pretty much uh, sections of a circle. It's all very clean and crisp looking. Moving into the handguard, you get a couple of rubber inserts, and you get these slashes cut in. Oh, and now that we're looking at the underside, there's the new Savage logo right there, and the uh, quick detach or the uh, the swivel stud at the back like you normally get. Uh, just feeling the the grip offhand, it, it feels quite nice. It, it feels very much like their older model. Uh, nothing really revolutionary going on here, but I think that these little rubber grips should do a good job of keeping the rifle in your hand. Moving forward, we have a metal trigger guard, and this has a little bit of a different shape. I like it. It should be plenty of room right here for uh, gloved hands or however big your hands are gonna be. I think it should fit pretty well in this trigger guard. And then of course you have the Accu trigger up front. Moving further forward, you have this, uh, this mag well right here. I was thinking originally that this was the accurate mag bottom metal, but no, this is something a little bit slimmer. This has, uh, it sticks down a little bit, uh, not quite as far on this rifle as the accurate mag model and I can kind of see why they did that why they went with this one uh, This might be CDI or Pacific and some of the metal actually extends up into The rifle as you can see there. This one doesn't sit uh, Entirely flush down here. It actually pushes up. I'll have to put an annotation to which bottom metal this is but uh, yeah, I can see why they went this route. It doesn't really include anything that's gonna snag on clothing or on straps or anything like that for a rifle that needs to be handy and needs to be really quick to the shoulder. Looking around to the top, safety as usual, and the action up here, take a look at this. This is not the old Model 10 action with its open top, or the 12 or 16 or whatever. This is more their target style action. So this one has that full top strap across the top, and that's probably going to lend itself to uh, even improved accuracy with these rifles that have it over the open top. I know that I never had any issues with the open top doing anything, but uh, any extra bit of rigidity through here is probably a good thing. Up top, we have the peep sight at the rear. This looks quite nice, uh, nicely machined, and it is adjustable for both windage and elevation. Moving forward, here is the, uh, the big deal that separates the Scout from all the other uh, ranch rifles and other just little shorty rifles, and that's where the scope is going to be placed. This is mounted out basically over the barrel, well out in front of the action. That way you can mount what essentially amounts to a pistol scope out front. This is pretty long, so you can mount things as far back or as far forward as you need. And the scope that we're gonna be working with at first, this is a Simmons gold metal. 
And these are a little bit rare nowadays. These were made back in the older days of Simmons. Uh, these are quite well known as being excellent scopes. Uh, I don't know if you can read this, but this one is made in Japan. Quite a nice pistol scope. This one does not have any tricks in the reticle. It's just a simple one and a half to four. And the magnification on a scout scope needs to be low. That was the original plan. Something in the range of two power, three power, four power, something like that. So you can easily get on targets at a variety of ranges, but mostly a little bit closer in. So yeah, we're going to put this on top. And then later we're going to be featuring another scope on top of here and uh, I'll, I'll release what that is a little bit later. I'm working with a vendor to be able to demonstrate uh, a really neat scope that I think will go very well with this. Now further forward, the handguard. This again is much like the older uh, AccuStock. Uh, it does have the, the, the metal kind of chassis insert here inside the stock. And it is a little bit on the thinner side, but then it has enough bulk that you're probably not going to, you know, be worried about getting your fingers around to the barrel and burning them. And that barrel, I should mention, is actually probably the biggest deviation that this rifle makes from the Scout formula as Jeff Cooper described it. This actually has quite a bit of bulk to it. This is a pretty hefty barrel. It has a very fast taper. It goes from, you know, a very thick... Um, section back here down to the muzzle which is still just a little bit larger I think than your average uh, sporter weight barrel but it doesn't taper down quickly and get down to a pencil barrel or anything and that's probably what uh, Jeff Cooper would have wanted if you look at his uh, Steyr Scout that he did a lot of shooting with and was kind of his favorite rifle the one that he helped design it had a very thin kind of pencil barrel it wasn't really designed for ultimate precision. It was designed to be quick and whippy and to really get on target quickly. And in my opinion, that rifle is just so ugly, partially because of how thin that barrel is and how huge the forearm is. But hey, you know, beauty is as beauty does. We're going to see how this performs. I suspect that when uh, Savage was taking a look at this, they, they kind of looked at that thin barrel and were like, eh. We, we, we do precision rifles, we'll make this a little heavier. So I'm expecting that this will actually shoot uh, quite well, possibly better than uh, Jeff Cooper's original design. We'll see about that. It kind of sounds anathema to say that. So the, the sight up front, this is a uh, kind of an AR style. It's, uh, it's not fully shrouded, it just has these ears on the side for protection and then kind of a, a thick front blade out here. And I think this should work very well for shooting at the, the size of targets that are expected for a scout rifle. This is uh, designed as kind of a law enforcement rifle. It would also be good against certain types of game. Uh, good stuff there. Up front, we have a muzzle brake. And this looks like it's going to be very effective. It, is, it has two quite large ports, even though it isn't all that much larger than the actual diameter of the barrel. So uh, I think that, you know, despite its, its lack of diameter, it still looks like it's going to be very effective. I've tried out a couple of muzzle brakes in this design on a couple of different rifles, and they functioned very well. So I expect that this one should take up the recoil a lot. Now bear in mind that with a muzzle brake like this, as close to your ear as it's going to be with this short barrel, that this is going to blow your ears out if you take a shot without any kind of hearing protection. We will be shooting suppressed with this, and uh, we'll be doing some, uh, some hearing safe stuff. We will actually test out this muzzle brake. We'll see how effective it is. Let's check out the parts and accessories. Okay, the bolt. This has an interesting looking bolt handle. That looks like it should be really functional. We'll, we'll give this a good feel on the actual rifle. The magazine, oh good. This is a Magpul 10 round P mag. This is one of the Accuracy International pattern, not the SR25. So this is going to be that single stack. And this is the one that I raved about on the Model 10 GRS. I love the way that this thing fed. That was easily the slickest I think rifle that I've ever felt, uh, at least it's the slickest Savage. It ran very, very smoothly, and a lot of that I think came down to the magazine. 
Now let's see what parts we get. Okay, so we get a little kind of guide to the AccuFit system right here. Okay, and it looks like it came with quite a few parts. Um, let's, let's find out what's in here. So it looks like, yeah, this does come with the, the cheek risers and extra spacers for the buttstock. Right, let's see what we have. Oh, wow, yeah. Crikey, it looks like you can get whatever butt space you want. My gosh, if you stack this up with the one that's actually in the rifle, you could probably get this thing. Uh, it Now it says uh, you might have to use special screws in order to get a length of pole that's out to 16 inches or so if you're a really tall guy. Uh, now I need 14 and a half, that's my uh, 14 and a half inch length of pole. Um, so I'll easily be able to get that with probably just one of these spacers. The official stats, here let me pull up the sheet, for the 110 Scout, uh, indicate that the overall length is going to be somewhere between 37 and a half and 38 and a half inches based on what kind of spacer you put in. Um, yeah, I think you're gonna be able to get more than that if you swap those screws. But uh, yeah, I should be able to get that 14 and a half inch length of pull, no problem. And I'm guessing that the shortest length of pull is gonna be about 13 inches. We'll find out in the final review. So let's see what other parts we have. Right. There's kind of a, a whale sized cheek riser. And this one is slightly taller. Wow, they included a lot of stuff in here. Way to go, Savage. I like that you don't have to go out and buy other parts. All right, let's see if we can figure out the, the height hierarchy. Okay, that one is shorter. even shorter and then you have the one that's actually attached to the rifle which is kind of flush it doesn't have this bump right here at all and it seems to just go straight back into the rifle so nice you get five different choices of cheek riser and that's just right in the box that is great value for money what a great idea so yeah there are the instructions there's the uh, survey card, and then back in here we're going to have the standard manual, uh, the lock, and the AccuTrigger adjustment tool. It's probably going to be automatically adjusted down to its lowest setting. We'll find out about that when we test this rifle out. Putting it all together, let's just give this a feel, see what it's like. Alright, magazine slots in pretty easily. And it removes easily. I thought that this uh, this lever for releasing the magazine was a little goofy that it, you know, it actually kind of flopped all the way open to touch the trigger guard. But I can see how that's actually a design feature with a rifle like this where you don't want uh, any obstructions. You don't want any bits popping out to, you know, knock against obstructions or whatever. You don't want it to catch on straps. So actually, that's pretty cool. This magazine rattles around a little bit in the magwell. And it might be different when there's actually ammo in there, but you know what? I'm gonna test something real quick. I just happen to have an Accurate Mag bottom metal and an Accurate Mag magazine. Ah, okay. I think this one's gonna work really well. This fits nicely. That was one of the issues that we ran across with the, uh, the, the Savage Evolution, where it didn't fit every kind of magazine exactly the same. And uh, this bottom metal actually didn't feed the, or didn't fit the MDT magazines at all. But I think this one has a little bit more relief than some of the others. And it should be able to fit all the mags. So we're gonna try all of them and see how they go. We got the, uh, the P mag, got this steel accurate mag. Yeah, we're going to do some tests with this. We're going to, I think, be able to shoot at some hogs with this. 
and we'll be able to do some kind of practical tests out on the range where we're shooting at targets out to the distances where this is designed to shoot. This is supposed to be anywhere from, you know, really close all the way out to about 450 yards or so, I think is what the, the concept calls for. And it's, you know, of course, it's meant for kind of larger targets in general. And we're going to see how this does and all that. So make sure you subscribe to The Social Regressive. We're going to test this a whole lot. If you've seen any of our videos in the past, you know that we overdo it right. Uh, we're gonna test this rifle into oblivion. We're gonna try it at all kinds of ranges. And most of it is going to be offhand because that's what this rifle is designed for. Uh, I probably won't ever put a bipod on it unless it's time to uh, sight in or test some hand loads in it. And speaking of hand loads, we're gonna be doing some subsonics with this rifle. The threaded muzzle, we're going to remove this muzzle brake at some point. We'll put on a suppressor, we'll shoot some subsonics through it, and we're gonna see what kind of damage it can do, and we're gonna listen to the sound and hear what a big old 208 grain Hornady Amax sounds like going by a microphone. Uh, yeah, good stuff coming. Make sure you subscribe, I'll see you around. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.